Alright. Hey, I'm flying with Alec. He's back for uh, Thanksgiving. And we're going to do a few landings. He's going to do a few VFR landings. I'm going to do a few instrument landings. Both of us to get our currency up. And in the process of doing all this, I was going to talk about the top five reasons that I have found. Five reasons I found that people have trouble with landings. And as we go through these different landings, we'll cover all five of them. Landings seem to be the hardest thing for my students to get. And I think part of it is it's a lot of feel and sight picture. I can't just tell you to put in a certain number of inches and do a certain number of degree bank like other maneuvers. It's Every landing's different. I say they're like snowflakes. They're all different. Uh, we're not going to cover... We're not going to cover crosswinds or gusty winds or anything like that. It's just a regular, calm day landing. So Alec is going to demonstrate the VFR landings. And he's e I told him he's either going to A, demonstrate the correct way to do it, or B, he'll be a uh, poster child for some of the incorrect ways. So, um, it's probably been a few months since you've a landing, I would think. Yeah, but don't worry, they'll be great. Um, and landings, for me anyway, if you don't fly for a while, landings are the first thing to go. Not that I can't land, but instead of doing greasers, I might have a little bump here or there. Um, you just kind of lose that muscle memory. It, it takes a little bit to get it back. For one reason, people struggle with their landings, have bad landings. Uh, unstabilized approach or incorrect approach. But I mean stabilized approach, I don't just mean you're not rocking all over the place and you're off course or whatever. The approach starts on the downwind. It does not start on the final approach. So speed control and altitude control are pretty important because when you turn final, you want to be on the glide path at the distance you want to be from the runway. So if your base, or I'm sorry, if your downwind and your base speeds are off or your altitude's off, when you turn final, you could be too high, you could be too low, you could be too close to runway, too far from runway. And if those are different every time, it makes it very hard to have a consistent landing because you're always fighting to get back where you need to be. So I'll use the numbers for this plane. Uh, your plane that you're flying might be different. And there are different numbers available for each plane, but you need to put consistently because you need to be in that same spot when you turn final as much as possible every time. And that's the first step in having a good landing. What we're going to do on this plane is we're going to keep our speed in the downwind until we hit the thousand footers. That's our touchdown marker is the thousand footers. We're then going to power back and we're going to shoot for 90. And we're going to use pitch to control 90 more than power to control 90. If we slow the plane to 90 with just power and we keep her level, she's not descending. So when we make our turns to come back into final, we're going to be too high. And I've had students do that. Well, I'm doing 90, but I said, but we haven't lost a foot from, from your pattern altitude. So that's the number one thing. When you turn final, you want to be on a consistent spot at a consistent altitude on the glide path. And that's going to set you up right there, step one, of having a, a good chance of having a nice landing. And you're, you're not fighting to get all over the place. So if your glide path is correct, and 90 on the downwind, then we go 80 on the base, 70 on the final, assuming calm winds. When we turn to final, if we do that consistently every time, if we turn when the runway's 45 degrees over our shoulder, we should be in the right spot every time. And then we're starting from the same spot every time. So, can't overstate that. You want the, the pattern to be consistent. You don't want to be doing 100 knots one day and 60 knots the other day. And well, every time you turn for final, it's a surprise where the runway's going to be. It should be right where you want it. But do you put the power out when you, uh, 50? A thousand push, you pull back to like 11. 11. Foothills Regional, Diamond, Pot 6, Delta Sierra entering left now wind runway 21, Foothills. And 90, 80, 70. 90, 80, 70. You're already going slow, so that might affect you a little bit. Usually keep her up about 120 or so until I hit the thousand footers, but that'll be fine. Alright, so you're going to hold her level. Alright, while you're holding her level, you go full prop. Full ridge fuel pump. Uh, our mixture's already full. Pump. Pump lane first right notch. notch. First notch. All right, we're now we're going to pitch for 90. Now we're going to use pitch and power, but more pitch than power. Foothills Regional Diamond, 526, Delta Sierra, turn to left base, runway 21, Foothills. I'm pitching for 80. That's right. Now we can get a good look at the runway and see. Too fast. 
Uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. I think I'm a little high. All right, so now we've turned final. I'm going way too fast. And uh, that's our number two thing. Speed control on final. Number two problem I see. We want to maintain a consistent and consistent aiming point. So your aiming point is not where you're going to land. It's what you're trying to keep at a consistent spot in your windshield. I usually use the top of the numbers, and we're going to use 70 knots for our approach speed. And we may have to, to throttle and, and come back a bunch of times. It's not just push power in and leave it there. It's just like your car going up a hill. You may have to feather no, that throttle. Way too hot. Oh, you're fine, so they keep coming. Okay. We that, dropped her a little bit. Yep. All right, let's taxi back. So back to what I was saying. You find your aiming point, keep that at the same relative spot to the cowling and the glare shoe, wherever you want to keep it. That is not your touchdown point. That's just the point you keep. Top of the numbers works good. If you're going to try to land on a thousand footers, top of the numbers works good. I think all too common, we get a little slow, somebody throws throttle in, and they just land it. And now instead of doing 65, we're now doing 85. So it's keep that hand on that power, just manipulate it as necessary to keep, uh, keep your speed. So that's our number two thing. Constant speed, constant aiming point. Yep bit too high coming in. Well, that's my number three thing too. Flaring a little too Unless high. Let's just go through the whole list right now. Uh, number three thing is flaring a little too high. I think you flared a little too high. Yeah, I agree with that. But you corrected it. But there's just a little bit of power and take it out. A little bit of power. But I still drop it a little bit. Kind of flatten your, your, uh, your attitude a little bit. I'll let you make your call. Foothills Regional, Diamond 526, Delta Sierra, taking off runway three and be departing the area to the south foothills. There's speed one. All right, good job. Uh, rounding out too high. That's a very common mistake, especially with newer students. They're afraid to get too close to the ground. And if you round out too high and just keep your normal procedure for flaring and, and uh, keeping your nose up, well, you're going to drop her like a rock because she's not going to descend for you. So if you flare too high, what Alec did was he kind of flattened his attitude a little bit, feathered in a little power just to let her sink a little bit, then resume the flare. That way we, we get back down to where we need to be. So number one rule is try not to flare too high to start with, but if you do, you need to correct it. Now if you're a new student, maybe you go around. If you're not comfortable with that, you know, if you're not with an instructor, go around and try again. So but that's number three, number three, flaring too high. Um, I like did a little bit of number one. You can see when we turned final, we were a little bit high. So we weren't quite where we wanted to be. He did correct that too, but if you get the other legs right, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be where you want. You don't have to uh, do anything. Or too bad, you just put a little nose down, a little power back. Yeah, I pulled the power all the way out. If we'd have been really high, you could have done you know, a forward a slip, slip and bring her down. But if you're really high, the one thing you can't do is just point the nose down and go, because you're gonna pick up so much speed that all of a sudden you'll get her down to altitude, but now you'll be going way faster. Um, and you can't force a plane to land. She will land when the lift is gone and she touches down. If you try to just plant it on the ground, it's going to bounce or it's going to hop back up in the air. Um, so speed control on that final is uh, is pretty critical. Yes, yeah, came in a little high. I think maybe I could have, I don't know, extended down one just a little bit. Me a little more room to get down, but. Well, that's why I keep my until I hit the thousand footers. You were already doing like a hundred knots. Yeah. So, so there was no slowdown. So you didn't get as long a down right, as so normal. Shorter. So if you keep it up about 120, then pull the power back, that pushes you down a little further. 
and you know that 45 degrees off your shoulder. So even if you're going slow, as long as you look for that. All right, so we covered a stabilized, organized approach. Covered maintaining our speed and our aiming point on final. And we covered not flaring too high. Last two items I see a lot. Number one, not having the plane tracking down the runway. I don't mean on the center line or off the center line. I mean using cutter to make sure the plane is angled to go in line with the runway so we don't get side load when we touch down. One way to help with that is when you taxi the airplane, assuming you're on center line where you should be, take a look at where the center line is in relation to the cowling. It's not going to be in the center of the plane because unless you're in a plane where you're sitting in the center of the plane, um, it's going to be offset. So if you're sitting in the left seat, the center line is going to look like it's probably about five degrees off to the right, vice versa from the right seat. So when you're coming in for the landing and getting into your flare, you want to make sure that nose is oriented correctly on the center line. If it's off too far left, too far right, when you touch down, you're going to put side load on that gear. And that can be quite disconcerting, and if it's enough side load, you can actually damage the plane. So that's the number four thing. Keep the plane aligned with the direction of flight down the runway um, so you don't put that side load on there. All right, and then the number five thing, and I see this more often than the rest of them. After the round out, when you flare the plane, you want to maintain the attitude of the plane. That does not mean that you don't have to move the controls. I see people come in, they get their controls set, they get the attitude, and then they don't touch the controls again. Now what happens is as the plane slows down, there's less lift on the plane, there's less uh, air going over all the control surfaces, so she wants to come down. And she might hit too fast, uh, she might hit at the wrong angle because that nose may drop. As you're going down the runway in the flare, your goal is to keep the plane off the runway as long as possible. And to do that, you're going to have to gradually increase the amount of back pressure you're putting in. Now, you don't want to get carried away. You don't want to balloon it if you just jam it in. So the easiest way to do that, I think, is once you get in your round out, transition your eyes from right in front of the plane to the end of the runway and look at the relationship of the nose to the end of the runway and try to maintain that as long as possible. You should be continually back pressure, back pressure, back pressure, and that will help slow the plane down and yet keep the altitude it has above the runway and then when she gets slow enough, she should just set right down. So it's kind of like you freeze altitude of the plane, you don't freeze the controls. If you just put a control pressure in and round out and keep it there, you're gonna hit way too hard and way too fast. Continual thing, you're flying this plane all the way to the ground. Those are my top five reasons I see problematic landings uh, from students. Well, not even just students. I get people that come to me that either A, need a biannual flight review, or B, want to get checked out to rent this plane. Landings are usually their Achilles heel. We can get through their stuff, and immediately I can see issues with landings. And usually you can tell right in the beginning of the pattern whether this is going to go well or not. So, I hope this helped you. Alex is going to make two more landings, which we will critique him all the way through those five items to see how he does, did. A uh, little off on the first lane, but he corrected it, still had a nice touchdown. That was my practice landing. I can't really gig him on that. Right, and he hasn't landed in a while. So we'll go through the two more, and uh, we'll see if we come up with anything good. There are the thousand footers. <laughs> I don't know. I don't see I see a number. Alright, I'd use that taxiway right there as your thousand footer. Five seven helicopter, six seven Charlie, five miles south of the one thousand five hundred in that lane. Launch full propeller, a little more mixture. Now we're going for 90. Full pump. Full pump. Right. There's 90. Pitching for 90. All right. Is that runway about 45 degrees off shoulder? Yep. All right. Lancaster County, down 526, Delta Sierra, turning left base, runway 6, Lancaster. I think you're a skosh high, what do you think? Yeah. Not as high as last time, right. but yeah. Uh, they do have a Pappy. Power out. Alright. Oh, you're not too bad. You're correcting it. This, that last notch of flaps is going to help you get your speed. Oh. Right, pointing right at the top of the six. Very good. Letting her come down. 
Power's out. Hey! Just ride her down the runway. Don't balloon her. Uh, all right. That, I would do that a, wheel do a, hit first. Do a tax back. You had a little hop. So you actually landed pretty soft and straight, but then in the hop she turned on you and you felt that side load on the second yeah, one? Yeah, I was leaning. Uh, why you hopped, I, I wasn't watching your airspeed to know if you were still going a little fast. It didn't feel hard, so my guess is you had a little extra airspeed and she went back up. Uh, that was my, what, number three or four point. Keep that plane pointed down the runway, because she'll give that little jerk if she hits with the uh, side load. That wasn't terrible. Your first touchdown was nice. So you count that as two, right? You get two currency touchdowns on that one? Yeah. All right, you'll get one more opportunity on this flight to... Yeah, you know, I just wanted to demonstrate a couple of your points. Gotcha, okay. And then this last one, I'm just going to, you know, say... Uh, just a greaser? Forget sir. it, I'll just, yeah. All right. Minimum. Minimum. Uh, on that's, airport. Yeah, it's from the, the last approach. All right, there you got her back on glide. Nice aim point right top of the two. It's looking good. Concord Tower, Crescent 302, 11 West, uniform. Crescent 302, Concord Tower, into the left. Your aim point kind of drifted two. down a little bit. One left, left down, one two. Crescent 302. Right. Uh, yeah, I felt it. Right. Much for the greaser on the fly. That was the worst one. Uh, you did get the nose lined up when she hit, but you, you know, you hit left then right. Then it went the other way a little uh, bit. Yep, yeah, they were not my best landings. Oh, so I know you came in on a base instead of a full pattern, but you noticed when we turned final, we were high. You didn't oh, quite get, get her down, but you got that corrected. Yeah, and you got it corrected in time. So really, it was just that uh, round out flare. Whiskey, runway two, turn uh, right on course. I was high on all three of them.